Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome to a very special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. We have Cody back from Mystery Archives. You guys loved it the first time he was here, so I'm so happy to have him back. And we actually have his cousin, not his brother, even though they look just alike, his cousin, <laughs> Brett, with us. And Brett is an illustrator, an animator, an artist who does a lot of Cody's artwork on his videos. And he's going to be doing the artwork for a special project over the Sally House that uh, Cody and I have been working on. We spoke about it in our last episode. So that is in the works right now, guys. And so I wanted to bring these guys on so we can kind of chit chat about it so you guys can get excited about the project that is coming up. How are you guys doing tonight, this evening, uh, afternoon? Doing good. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Awesome. Don't they look alike? I mean, you guys look so much alike. <laughs> I find it funny the beard that we're and the beanie. the beanies. Yeah, it's a beard and the beanie. <laughs> I have a I have a male cousin on my mom's side of the family. Uh, my cousin Robert. I don't know if he's watching or not, but we Robert and I we're like nine years apart, but we look very 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 similar. Like we look, and his older sister, he was also my cousin, and my little sister look a lot alike. So mm -hmm. DNA is just funky like that. It's super super weird. <laughs> you know, we're all on my mom's side of the family. We're all like blonde haired, blue eyed, with like little German babies. But you know, <laughs> here in the south. <laughs> but um, so we're gonna get started though, because we kind of talked about this off air. But I told them to hold it because I wanted to get to, to film this. Um, so we had a question for Cody before we get into the Sally house regarding one of his latest videos uh, our, our episodes about the story of Veronica and somebody, and I'll let you kind of paraphrase that I'll put a link to that video in the description box for you guys. So you can watch it, but I'll let Cody give kind of a little two second backstory, but the person wanted to know if you thought that this girl, that this Veronica story is based off of had rabies because some of the descriptions of, of her, possession or whatever you want to call it. it it's interesting that they mentioned that because I, I thought that that could be a possibility. Um, but as far as all the paranormal activity that took place after she had passed away, that was actually documented by law enforcement there in Spain. That's where I'm like, well, you know, there could have been other elements involved. I mean, maybe she did have rabies. I, I really <laughs> don't know. Could have been a combination it didn't come of the up two. In any, um, <laughs> It could have been, but you would you would think it would have come up in like the medical records or something like that, um, which as far as I could tell from the research I did, um, it didn't. So I don't know. Maybe there was like a bat somewhere in the house or something. I, I have no <laughs> idea. Demons with rabies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it did. Yeah. Like This happened in like 1990. I mean, even though that was, what, 31 years ago, it's not mm -hmm. that long ago. Like they would have probably tested if she if she showed signs of that. They probably would have. They're always mm -hmm. looking for. You would think. Yeah. I mean, I think even even us who kind of really dig this stuff, we always want to look for the logical explanation first before we jump off the deep end and, and say it's paranormal. For sure. You know, so I think, too, they probably would have tested her for that. They're always looking for a simple explanation. And for people who have dealt with paranormal stuff, you, too, are looking for a simple explanation. You would much rather be always. dealing with just a sickness than something. You <laughs> yeah. Can. Well, I mean, ra rabies would be pretty serious to deal with. I mean, as far as I know, unless they catch it super early, you're kind of donezo anyways. But yeah. the whole foaming of the mouth, the seizures, the aggression. I mean, I could see why they would be like, did she have rabies? And I'm like... <laughs> as far as I know, I don't know. <laughs> now she she played with a Ouija board, right, in school, in her school. Yeah, um, as far as I could tell, one of her friends, um, her boyfriend, passed away in a motorcycle accident. So, in order to contact him to try and give her some closure, they yeah. started messing around with a Ouija board, and they actually and did it go. at a Catholic school. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but they go. did it at a Catholic school, <laughs> and uh, which is a little bit ironic considering, you know, how hardcore the Catholics tend to be on stuff like paranormal and Ouija boards. But apparently they why. conducted the ritual <laughs> in the basement. And uh, yeah, long story short, a, a nun interrupted it. And that's when stuff just kind of, you know, went, <laughs> went crazy. <laughs> I just imagine the nun walking in and seeing that happen with no context. <laughs> I'm sure they've seen all sorts right. of <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, well, that's and I, from what I understand about Ouija boards, and we were laughing off camera, guys, because as you know, we're doing a project on the Sally House, which we'll get to. But I said I would rather spend the night in the Sally House than play with the Ouija board. Like, I take the Ouija board very, very seriously when it comes to that kind oh, yeah. of stuff because I don't like messing around. 
you know, I, I know we, we talked about that before. We both have had experiences with paranormal phenomenon and there are very good entities, but there's also very, very bad entities. And, and apparently there's like a, a way you have to close the Ouija board. Like there's a specific yeah. way. Yeah, there is. You have to it's, say it's goodbye. A, it's a ritual tool. You don't, yeah. you don't, you know, you don't open a, a circle. You don't, you're not just going to use a Ouija board and not have a circle, not banish, not do any of these things, you know, before and afterwards. It's just little kids kind of opening a portal to the other world and then just leaving it. That's smart. <laughs> Dave, the game says if you, if you find the Ouija board game at like Target or something, it's like for ages eight and up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Summon demons with ages eight and up. Bring demons back to It's pizza night with ghosts. I'm like, I, what I parents... wonder if there's like a. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was like, what parents buy their eight year old Ouija board and just like, I mean, that's playing with fire. Like, here, kid, have fun with this. Let's see what you can right? add to our house. I, I wonder if Hasbro has like a little litigation, like fine text that says Hasbro is not responsible for any demons brought into this the world. demonic possession. <laughs> <laughs> that may you know, or may not incur is they for might, use of this I know so different states obviously are different how they handle certain situations. And where my mom's from in the low country of South Carolina, like Charleston, that whole area, at one I've point, got family there too. Yeah, that, talk about a haunted city. At one point, I don't know if it's the same now, so if anybody from Charleston is listening, but at one point, real estate agents, if you were to sell your house, you had the, the agent had to disclose to the potential buyers about paranormal phenomenon, regardless if they believe yep. it or not. It was by law. They had to like say like, so, you know, you got a ghost here, <laughs> you know, like well, the walls <laughs> occasionally bleed. Okay. Yeah, so, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, don't worry. If, if you hear it screaming in the middle of the night, like it's <laughs> fine. It's fine. It's just fill up the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's, yeah, it's, we, we actually have a law in the books here in Kansas. Cause when I was buying my house, I had to ask about it. Cause I had heard about that before. And I know that it's a law in California. I, I oh, really? didn't know it was one in South Carolina, but yeah, apparently it's, it's more uh, common than people might think. But yeah. I had to ask, I was like, so, uh, any violent past or ghosts here and my real any estate, agent, nah, you're, you're totally good. You're like, you're just like, buried on top great. of a Indian burial ground. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they have to disclose the Indian burial ground, but the, the demons and I think the violence is only the, like the last like five years or so. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I fortunately have done some research on my house. Totally good. Built in the 1950s. We're, we're set. <laughs> we're, yeah. It's, I would probably actually, you know, it's funny. Like I, I grew up in a haunted house as a kid. We talked about this last time having experiences mm -hmm. and I, where we live now, I feel really good. Where my boyfriend used to live, I did not feel so good. But if we ever were to move, I probably would get like a medium to come in and just be like, tell me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> don't want to walk into something that I'm not, I don't want to deal with, you know? So I, so, I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing is I was saying before we went on, we have, so my boyfriend and I own a yoga shop, a yoga studio here in Atlanta and it's haunted. We have a ghost there. Um, it's on top mm. of a burial or a, um, a, a war, a battle site from the civil war. And mm. the ghost doesn't, do yeah, he doesn't bother me. Like he, we've had many experiences. He's not a bad or anything, but my boyfriend has wanted to get like a Ouija board and like go in there and like, like try to communicate. No, I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not doing that with me. Nope. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like the ghost and I are good. Like I talk to him when I'm in there, like, we're good. We're good. He knows. Like, I think I told you what one morning I was there at like five 30 in the morning, I was about to teach like a really early morning class. And I could hear these like boots walking around in the main practice room and I, I, he was being super active and it was kind of freaking me out. And I literally said out loud, listen, I have to teach a class in like 15 minutes. I only have one <laughs> pair of pants with me that I have on. And if you show you <laughs> me, I will shit my pants. And then I, and I like, so please don't do this to a lady, you know, and I, do me stop. one solid, do me like, a solid. He's like, oh, me. that's not very late. Like. Exactly. I'm like, listen, you're from the 19th century. You don't want a lady walking around in soiled no. pants. So be a gentleman, no. okay? Be a gentleman about this. <laughs> You're really freaking me out, dude, because 
That's hysterical. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Please don't show yourself to me. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Ouija boards, man. Like, just, I just. Yeah. It, it's like I was saying before we even kind of hit record. Like, I have not heard a single story, not a one, fictional or not, about anything good coming from somebody using a Ouija board. Not a one. It's like not all a rip, no one. benefit. <laughs> You know, how, how typical of like a 16 year old teenager to like tragically lose their boyfriend because everything is super tragic when you're that age anyway. Like that was my favorite yeah. note in school about Romeo and Juliet. Like is Romeo and Juliet a romantic tragedy or is it literally two hormonal teenagers? Just teenage yeah. angst. <laughs> yeah, literally, what is this story? And so, you know, and it's tragic that her boyfriend died, of course. I'm not trying to make light of that. But what a typical teenage move to go and, like, try to, like, conjure his spirit to talk right. to him versus, like, going to what, a therapist. What an extreme. Well, yeah, instead of going to a therapist. To process what a massive trauma. extreme. Yeah. Instead like, of trying to cope, you practice necromancy. That's smart. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, but it is what, actually, that's a fun question. So if anybody is watching and has had a good experience with the Ouija board, because you're correct, I have never heard of one. Yeah, person. I've not heard of one. Not like, not a single say one. that was a good idea. Everybody's like, don't do it. It was awful. So if you guys are listening and you have a good experience with it, leave our the story down in the comment section below, because I would love to hear it. Because... <laughs> I mean, the thing about like good, I feel like good spirits or like loved ones or angels, they don't want to scare, they'll, they'll try to communicate with you if they need to. We've all had those experiences and it's peaceful and they're not trying to scare you. So anything that's coming with a game sold by a corporation in America, probably <laughs> not. Probably evil. Probably. <laughs> if it's coming from a mega corporation, probably right, evil. Exactly. I mean, let's, <laughs> let's think about everything we've learned over these past th few years or these big, big corporations. Let's like put two and two together. It's probably not a good thing. Probably not something you want in your house. I, I can imagine some Hasbro executives with their big old, you know, Cuban cigars, just like, that's a demon. Let the demons in. <laughs> binding, <laughs> binding demons to all these boxes. Well, have y'all heard of the the rich uh, Robert the Doll? The Robert the Doll story? Yes. So I've actually approached Brett about doing a, a video on it. Oh, y'all yeah. should. Y'all should. Well, do you want me to tell you what I what I heard somebody read off of that? Sure. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to ruin it. it on me. I'm do a story on it. That that was no, you're doll. good. So I was watching like a tarot card reader, not a tr truth or tarot card, but like a pop culture tarot card reader. Um, and he did that. He did uh, Robert the doll and he did Annabelle, the two dolls. And Annabelle's uh, another one. Yeah. yeah. They, were all, they were like, they were like used as what we would call like voodoo dolls almost, but I'm not, I don't want to say we're doing, I'm doing a deep dive into new Orleans and we're going to get into voodoo and it's not what people think it is really. I mean, oh, it's deep. it goes deep. Ha Haitian voodoo and uh, new Orleans voodoo go deep. Yeah. Well, they had, so Robert the doll and Annabelle were like binding, they were like spirits bound to these mm -hmm. dolls and that, so the, the, the experiences and it was, I think it was Annabelle was the one where it mirrored. So like whatever darkness you had in you, which we all have a shadow side, we all have that, it would pull it out of you. And so Ooh. you were creating your own. No, thank you. Yeah, I know. You're creating your own <laughs> shit show because the doll is pulling that out of you. And um, one of them, one of them, it's like, doesn't. Oh, and Robert was like, a. Uh, he was, if I'm remembering correctly, he was like fertility. Like somebody put a spell on him so that anybody that owned him would not be able to uh, have more children. And then he okay. doesn't like children. And so, so it's a curse, basically. Yeah. And so yeah. now now both these dolls are in museums, but apparently like legend goes that if you take a picture of it, take it home, then you bring like an essence of that with you. So no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just not smart. There, Images there's another power. one. <laughs> yeah. There's another one called Norman the doll. I'm not sure if you've I've looked into him or not either. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty spooky. Um basically the doll was purchased at like a thrift store. And it had a very tragic story to begin with because it was donated by this lady who lost her newborn son in a house fire. And they think that they originally thought the people who purchased this doll, that the little boy's spirit inhabited the doll, but it seemed to be something way darker because it started interacting with the house and started tearing things up. Like there's a whole um, episode of the show called a haunting on it. And it's, it's super duper interesting.
but I've thought about doing a video on that too. It's, you it's should, because it is, I, <laughs> this is common. Like this is a common thing because, and, and spirits sometimes will do that. They'll pretend to be like childlike. We have that with they the house, don't we? They, they pretend yep. to be innocent, uh, childlike, but they're, they're demonic. Um, yeah, to lower your defenses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if it's evil, it's going to do that. Like it knows how to do whatever little dirty trick it needs to, to, you know, lower your defenses. So manipulate you, make you vulnerable. Absolutely. So, and I know I'm there, you guys can go down like a rabbit hole, like many years ago before I even started my channel. Cause like literally, I think this is why Cody and I vibe so much last time is cause I think deep down we're both weirdos like deep deep down yeah, we're, a little like, bit. You're, you probably are too like we're just weirdos like like i yeah. i just like deep down like i instead of watch like these youtubes on like i watch i didn't watch a whole series on people that collect like you know the porcelain dolls they had in like the early 19th century that girls had like oh yeah collect them because they had like spirits attached to them and oh. i don't i mean i don't listen i i believe in reincarnation i believe we've lived many lives but I don't remember if I've lived before. I don't remember the passing, what happens. None of us remember that. But like, I'm like, do the spirits just like walk out of their body and go, you know what would be real fun if I got in this doll? Like that would be real fun. <laughs> Imagine, that horrible existence. Imagine just having your soul trapped in a porcelain doll. That sounds absolutely atrocious. That sounds know, awful. Right? Like, do I walk into the light and do this again? Or do I just jump into this doll? This I mean, I guess if you're like a creepy stalkerish kind of a person, it might be ideal. But I think for most of us, it's probably <laughs> not a good Did idea. You, I mean, remember, like, think about like all the pervs, the perverts out there that like pass away and they're like, hey, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into a toy. <laughs> I if think it was my... optional to leave, I would just troll people. I would hop into the doll and, you know, just be frozen there and then just creep around at them and look back real fast. But if I could leave of my own volition, that would be the way to do it. But if I was trapped there, I, uh, right. I wouldn't sign up for it. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of spirits get trapped there, like they're put there. I mean, it's amazing how many, I, I didn't realize how many people dabble in like magic, black magic or white magic or. There, there are a lot of them. Like, the, the occult is everywhere. Well, and the thing is, <laughs> is, is like, and I, and I shouldn't be surprised because down here in the deep south, like that's part of the culture down here is because oh, we have yeah. so many. Um, <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me in the one of the New Orleans episode, like, why isn't Florida considered part of the deep south? And I said, you know, it's because it's just culturally, like how it was settled. Like the deep south, Florida was still kind of off over here with Spain, and this was a like, kind of an area. Yep. And so you had all the Native Americans, the Africans, and then like. And then plus like the, the character of the deep South where it's humid and hot and muggy and like mm -hmm. breathes itself. And so you had a lot of like, even like white women were learning how to do stuff, you know, that, that maybe mm -hmm. they didn't learn over in Europe that they were learning here in America. And so, so these, these kind of <clears throat> incantations got passed down. Um, and yeah, it's crazy. Like the more you go down the rabbit hole, you're like, you're like, am I the only one who's never cast a spell? Like, am I, am I the only one who's never that? <laughs> I, oh I feel God. like it might be extra haunted because don't you guys have different burial practices, especially in the more humid parts of the South? So, yeah. well, here's the thing about the low country. So low country is where my mom's family's from, which is like South Carolina, Charleston, down to Savannah. So Georgia. So there's a lot of like mm -hmm. Gullah people, which would be like kind of like the, the Creole of New Orleans would be like our Gullah. Mm. Um, now the thing okay. about this area is that it's super Protestant. And so the burial practices are a little bit different between Catholic and Protestant. They had to mm -hmm. be buried on originally the settlers on hollowed ground. So they had to be attached mm. to a church, but then that changed once like the wars and battles started happening and they had to move um, the bodies. But the creepy thing about the low country with the bodies is because of the way the, the ground is closer to the sand, mm -hmm. the bodies will move underground. So like if you oh. need to like pull up like your great, great, great grandpa, because maybe he had a ring that you guys need to get out and you go to people in the body will be like moved. It will shift under the ground because of the oh. way the, that's freaky that's creepy. That's creepy. because of like the the wetness and the sand and so that i'm assuming <laughs> so well and there was well, a, or your great grandpa's a vampire and, i know right you know, well there's a hotel around. in savannah yeah. there's a hotel where during the um civil war they used it as a hospital for actually for the union troops so for the north mm. and they guys you know like you see all these 
that time back in the 19th century, there's a huge scene in Gone with the Wind where they would have to amputate arms and legs off of. Yeah. They didn't have. Um, they would basically just give them a bunch of whiskey, and then start yep. spawn. Yeah. And then, or, or give them a leather strap or a bullet. Yeah. Well, they would give them the bullet right from. They would make them drink a bunch of alcohol, and if they're going to have to do the surgery, they would, you know, down a bunch of the whiskey, and then they would just smack them in the head with a hammer over and over again until they got knocked Passed out. out. <laughs> well, get, so get this. So this hotel that's in Savannah oh. today, they had all, they, they, like, did some renovation, and they found, like, all of these, like, limbs, like, in, in the floorboards of this hotel in Savannah. And they, this was monetized. They called the cops because they thought for a second that it was, like, a serial killer on the loose. But the, the bones, of course, were dated to, like, the I 19th mean, century. That, that makes Not a little crazy bit of conclusion. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine, though? Like, I mean, that's what you get down here in the South. Like, you just start digging stuff up. And you're like, oh, look. It's like a bunch of I'd be like, what is going on with this? <laughs> <laughs> just what happens out here in the south you know but i mean north- sorry go ahead I, uh, I was gonna say i was gonna it's funny you were about to start talking about new orleans because i i'd watched your uh, video you did over the carter brothers you know mm-hmm. just recently and uh, you know you're talking about the different burial practices with those um you know oven graves right with those kind of oven mausoleums and i like that's pretty cool i didn't really know about the phase one and phase two but that is super spooky i if if i'm gonna basically have like a bit of a take on that they're totally vampires Totally. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, I, I listen, listen. With everything we've learned and this great awakening we've been going through, I'm like, nothing surprises me anymore. I'm like, I feel like Fox Mulder. Yeah, like nothing. Like, <laughs> hit me with your best shot. You know, I mean, people are seeing two sons now. I've talked about it on a couple of shows. People are like taking pictures of two sons. We're like, really? Because when I was a kid, we had to make a module of the solar system, and there was one son. <laughs> so what are they not telling us? <laughs> so I mean, Pl- Pluto was still a planet when I had to make my solar system. Exactly. So. <laughs> and then, what was it? So Pluto, me too. Pluto was a planet, and then Pluto went away, and then Pluto came back, and they found a picture of Pluto, and Pluto's beautiful, and they're like, that's the best revenge body anybody could ever have like <laughs> best rebound <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh that was so yeah pluto was a planet for me too um yeah but new orleans isn't that creepy like so the reason why they do that if you guys have not seen that video is because new orleans if y'all remember from like katrina is below sea level yeah right? mm-hmm. it's below yep. sea level so so when you have all these like burial plots and you have a huge hurricane like katrina and it pulls mm-hmm. things gonna- up you know <laughs> all of a sudden grandpa's yeah, floating boys. down the mississippi river you know? <laughs> so they, they they do i mean and think I mean, it seems like economical the way they do that but i could not imagine like going to like change out between phase one and phase two and seeing like your your meemaw's bones you know like <laughs> surely to god they it, have it would be else. spooky it would the be smell spooky. i would hope they contract me. someone yeah the and smell would the- be horrendous the bones and the dust are like there together for many generations. Like all, all that DNA is just kind of there hanging out together. Like that's just, it, it is. If you really think about it a lot, it is kind of, I mean, it's economical. It's saving space, but. Yeah. You, know. you may as well just turn them into bricks. <laughs> <laughs> just build, just build a castle with them. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just imagine like you have your skull, right? And you know, you end up going after phase one and they move, they just kind of shove you back and your skull ends up being next to like the pelvis of your great, great grandmother or something. <laughs> think about like old school like for women you know we typically in the west we and for most cultures we i know some cultures are a little different but women become a part of the the man's family like they take the man's name so if you're in mm-hmm. a family tomb and you're a woman and you're being buried in your fam, your married family's tomb your head might be next to like your husband's grandpa's pelvis like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a little weird. You know? Hey, so, Jerry. You never want to die in New Orleans. <laughs> I know, right. But New Orleans is very Catholic. No. So you see a different kind of, it's, it's interesting in all the research I've done, the differences between like all these different denominations on how they handle. I'm like, it's all the same Jesus. Like, I don't know how we all got all of these totally different like oh. ways of doing stuff. It's funny because I had um, <laughs> disagreements. <laughs> Uh, you know, his his little brother is extremely Catholic. Uh, so like, I was Super talking Catholic. to him a little bit about this. I think it's kind of a bit of a cruel irony if you take uh, Christianity at face value that God sort of incarnated 
and gave us the truth, you know, like the capital T truth. And the cruel irony is that he does that and then nobody can agree on what that truth actually was. Right. <laughs> there's, there's all these denominational conflicts between each other to nobody can really set, you know, set it straight. I think that's quite this kind of cruel joke. I think that's, um, I think that's really sad based off of what Jesus died for. Literally, Jesus said, yeah. literally, he said, love your love thy God with all thy heart and love each other as I have loved you. Meanwhile, <laughs> Christians were like burning each other at the stake over a different. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you missed the point, guys. I was looking at some, I was watching a, a, um, um, an archaeologist talk about some of the stuff that they had found regarding, like, the early, like, Christians. And he was explaining from, is just to make a long story short, explain this stuff. And at the end of it, he was like, you know, if Jesus came back and saw the church, he wouldn't recognize it. And I had this, no. like... I had this no, not at all. fabulous gay friend out in LA who used to say that all the time. Like if Jesus came back today, he would look at the church and just be like, so not what I meant guys. So not what I, meant. <laughs> I was like, you are right. You are absolutely correct. So, um, well, so guys, I know we talked a little bit last time with Cody about the Sally house. We were chit chatting and that's when we had the idea on air to, to collaborate because this is such a big, interesting, I think kind of, portal and Br brett's going to be doing the animation for that series do we want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff happening in the sally house or do what do you guys want to do you want to give them a little bit of a teaser of what's going on at that house or yeah i mean we definitely can <laughs> oh it's evil it's evil it's just pure evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's if there was ever a place in kansas that was haunted that wasn't called stole <laughs> <laughs> this would be the Sally house. It's extremely haunted from what, I, town, what I've gathered. The town is where like, what, Amelia Earhart, isn't she from that town or yeah. something? Like it's got, yeah. it's got some like pretty important uh, landmarks for American history. Um, and it's not that big of a town, is it? It's not. I've, I've been there a couple of times, actually. I, I've never, you know, explored any of the haunted places within it. Thankfully, <laughs> I feel like maybe something would have followed me back if I had. But uh, going there for various like sports functions and stuff like that, it's really not that big at all, yeah. which is interesting for how many stories have come out of it, because there's well, a lot. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of <laughs> significant 10. because um, it's a part, it was a part of, um, you know, we kind of don't think about it too much today because we've got highways and planes and everything, but it was a really big, uh, it was like the easternmost junction of like the big railroad road, uh, network that just sort of like spanned, you know, all the way from there to, you know, other parts of Kansas, but across the nation. So it, it kind of helps explain how it was a sort of hub uh, for most of its life. A lot of people came through there and yeah, leave, yeah. It, that's how Atlanta started off. Atlanta was, was never supposed to be, well, it wasn't the capital of Georgia at this point, but it was a railroad town. It was never supposed to mm -hmm. be a big booming like metropolis that it is now. It was just a railroad town. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people, yeah, I think when you have those crisscrosses, especially where there's lots of rivers from back in the day, when people use rivers, that's for like their, their, their highway, basically, you are going to get yep. a lot of interesting energy passing through that's going to leave an imprint on the town. And I know with the Sally House guys, I'll say it, it got its name Sally from one of the main entities that people tend to tend to see there, which is a little girl named Sally, which we talk about in, in the video and her death was pretty horrific. Like, I mean, pretty mm -hmm. horrific. And it wasn't from what it, it wasn't like an intentional, you know, they were actually trying mm -hmm. to save her life. And yeah. It was totally got, accidental. <laughs> and she yeah. got stuck. And it's funny. Cause at that point the house was owned by a doctor's family and that was that was traditional back then and, and like in a certain time that um, doctors would have like they would either go make house calls or you would go to their house. And so mm -hmm. there's a restaurant down here in Atlanta, south of Atlanta that I've covered. That was the same thing. A doctor lived there. And so anytime you have an emergency situation where people are passing over, you're going to have a hot spot you know oh, um, absolutely um, some activity so, so that's one thing if you ever move into an old house here in america you might just want to ask that of your real estate agent too just be like did a doctor ever live here <laughs> yeah doctor ever live here? or or i mean if you start finding severed limbs everywhere <laughs> <laughs> before yeah, you call the police <laughs> have them dated to make sure they're not from the 18th 1800s 
<laughs> and it's not a serial <laughs> killer in your town. So yeah, and there's, but it's yeah. not just the little girl now. Um, there's like people think there's like a demon in the house too, right? They have like yeah, it's very the Amityville. original landlord. It is very Amityville esque for sure. Um, mm. But yeah, the original landlord who I think still owns the property did some digging and ended up finding like a, a really strange looking pentagram in the basement underneath the original floorboards which we talk about that a little bit in the video itself. But mm. they think maybe they don't know how many people were involved in whatever occult type activity that was going on there. But uh, at least one person was definitely doing something they weren't supposed to be doing, which Sometimes could you know, account for whatever demonic activity is taking place there. Yeah, they probably had a Ouija board too at some point in there. <laughs> probably. Oh, or make yeah. the house a Ouija board, I guess. Like. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I get from it, from other people's experiences. I was listening to a podcast about the Sally House years ago. And the guy, it was these two guys that had gone out there. And the main guy was, was skeptical of all this. Even though they talked about a bunch of paranormal stuff, he was very skeptical and they recorded mm -hmm. some of the EVPs, like the voice phenomena stuff. And it like literally, he talked about it afterwards. Now I've played with this stuff for a long time. So hearing things scream on an EVP doesn't really affect me that much anymore because I'm a weirdo at heart. Like I've listened to this, but for him, like when he was, it, you could really hear in his voice that he had been like crippled by this. Like this was something that mm -hmm. literally pulled the carpet out from under him. And he said, he will not go back that he was so, but it's funny because I think when you have that first like initial paranormal experience, it does change you. It does make you Absolutely. realize you're not as safe as you think you are. And there's so much that we can't see. There's so much that we haven't right. been taught to see, you know, and that, that, that's kind of scary. Um, and, 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 and you see that from so many people who, who go to this house, do they allow people to stay the night now? Or is it, is it not allowed? Do you know? Yeah. I, I think you can actually book it as like a venue, not like a venue for like weddings and stuff, but to like, uh, like to stay the night in sort of a thing. I think that someone, someone owns it. I don't know if it, it's the original guy or not, but you can actually book it to stay the night, kind of like a hotel, which mm. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not ballsy enough for that. <laughs> I would probably walk in first. I tend to get scratched though. Like I, I get scratched Ooh. all the time. So I think I'd probably walk out with a scratch on me or something. Um, or you worse. I mean, or <laughs> worse, some or of the stuff I've home. read. Get some holy water before you go in there. So you're not bringing anything home with you. Just be like, listen, seriously, we got enough spirits down in Atlanta, Georgia. You not <laughs> we don't, we don't need any more. <laughs> listen, listen, tigers. spirits of the Sally house. You're a superstar here. You are a big fish in a small pond here in Atlanta. You're not going to be the main event anymore. You're not, so. not going to be able to work the uh, ghost circuit as hard. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have too much competition. I know. Back. you got a lot more down here in Atlanta. So you just best stay in the Sally House where you can just shine. <laughs> you can, you're a little star. Right? <laughs> Um, so, we were talking about EVPs. I was going to ask, I've never personally captured an EVP. I've always been kind of too afraid to like go out into like a cemetery with a tape recorder or something like that. But have you captured any EVPs yourself? I have, or? I have over Skype with somebody else working what they call the Frank box, I think is what it's called, where they know how to do it. Like a spirit box? Yeah, it, there's a special way that you do it. And I don't know how to do it. So I don't know if I would, I would probably like think I'm doing it, but was literally just picking up a radio station from the next town over or something <laughs> like that. There's a literal way that you do it where you can get the the radio like to, to vibrate between channels that allows for... Um, like a certain frequency or type of frequency. It's creepy. I still have some of the recordings on my iTunes. I could probably send you from like, it was over 10 years ago. And two mm. of people I went to school with as a kid who have passed away came through and like, it oh, was wow. their voices. Like, you know, you know, kids you grow up with, like the kids you grew up with, like you always say them with their full name. Like, you, you know that like the kids you grew up with, you're like, Oh yeah. You know, remember Jen Smith? Like you say that, you remember how I say your yeah. full name? You yeah. Know? You say the yeah. whole thing. Like the whole yep. name when you talk about it, we all do it. We all do it with kids that we grew up with. Yeah. It's only the people you grew up with. Your friends nowadays, you don't really do that. But it's the kids you grew up with. You no, always it's always, for, always first name with the guys you know now. But back in the day, yeah, you say the full name. Full name. <laughs> and, and for, full name. When, when your friends start getting married, because I'm a bit older than you guys, but the girls that you grew up with that you get married, that when they get married, they could be married for 20 years and you still refer to them by. Yeah, their main name or yeah, such and like, such. 
Yeah, and my mom used to do that with her friends that she grew up with. And she would say, like, oh, you know, like, uh, Tracy Lou, you know, Thomas. Tracy Lou. <laughs> Instead of like, and I'm like, who is that? And I realized like the last name, because we would we would call them by their married name, but it's it's the yeah. weirdest but human beings just do this weirdest phenomenon. But um yeah. <laughs> you, you remember their voices. Like I remember my friends' voices that I grew up with. I think because you spend so much time growing up with them. And I still remember their phone numbers back when we had landlines. I remember all their phone numbers. But um, so when it came through on the the Frank box, I was like, holy shit, mm-hmm. like you you can like get on my <laughs> Oh my god! Like oh my god! Yeah, I, I, mean, so I would be freaking out. I would yeah. lie. I so would be freaking out. I mean, at least they were together, hanging out. So. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, um, but- it's it's interesting. You mentioned that someone from your past came through because I, I was actually listening to a radio show the other day with uh, the late great Art Bell, and there was a company that was based here in the U.S. and I, I forget their name. I'm sure I'll do a video on it at some point. But they engineered some kind of spirit box and they made contact with, um, I believe it was a German doctor from the 19th century. And they were able to have calls like one uh, one way calls where they could speak to him on a regular basis. And they documented all of this over the course of like eight or nine months. So they were able to contact the same exact spirit and talk to it eight or nine months in a row. And the way that the frequency comes through like you can clearly tell it's this specific person. Um, the modulation and the voice changes a little bit. Yeah. But it's really interesting because he just described it as it's essentially like a- another life. Like he was a doctor again. He was still working, <laughs> which I don't know yeah. how I feel about that. But <laughs> no. yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but it just uh, it gives a whole different perspective into the afterlife and what could really happen when we pass on. So I'm, I'm sure we will have to do a video on that at some point. I'll see yeah. if I can find you. Now, did stuff, you so know, you can, you so can like, listen to it too. This is the, infer- like, the questions I have for like our ghost at Arshala who lived, we think, in the Civil War. Like, do you mm-hmm. recognize, did, did he mention that he recognized that time had passed on our plane of reality? Did he recognize uh, yes. that? Yes. And uh, as a matter, it's funny you mentioned that because they asked him as well. They asked the doctor um, what the time measurement was like over there, if he could tell that he had passed on and that sort of a thing. And he said that he could tell that he had passed on, but that the way that time uh, worked where he was, was, uh, was totally different. I forget the time span in particular, I'd have to rehash some of my information, but like an hour there was like, I think it was like a year here or something like that. It was very abstract. It was different for sure. Interesting. You know, we're in this like, you know, astrologically last December, the 21st, we, we entered into the age of Aquarius where Jupiter and Saturn Mm -hmm. lined up. It was leaving the age of Pisces, which is Mm -hmm. in the Bible. It talks about revelation. Oh yeah. a thousand years of peace coming in and on my channel too we we, we've been we've been digging through a lot of these banned or heretical books which are absolutely tell you a lot more information about the truth and one thing that i have learned is that our understanding of time is man-made i mean we have the seasons but god set up astrology for us to understand the timing but we have this created this this contraption but the um, as it was actually an Art Bell show I was listening to, um, and I forgot. I think I might have been researching Skinwalker Ranch or something. It's a long time ago. Probably oh, right. another freak of <laughs> with nids and all that. Yeah, like I can't like that. That we've done a video crazy. on it. <laughs> yeah, like, that's that, crazy. I like had to like I like said every prayer I remember for Sunday school growing up when I would go to bed because that, that thing gave me nightmares. But I listened to an episode of I, I I got started listening to some Art Bell stuff and this Native American man who was like half Native American half like a white person so he kind of understood mm-hmm. both both of the world and he started talking about um, basically around the year two thousand we went into what they called in the Native American um, community the quickening where time would yeah. get faster. Mm-hmm. And it does feel like time is getting faster. I mean, I know oh, when yeah. you're a kid, yep. you feel like time is so slow because you just want your birthday to come or Christmas to come or summer to come. And an adult, it just, but it literally feels like minutes are getting time faster. Time is speeding up. Like, yeah. yeah. There's literal acceleration going on. I can, I can agree with that. And when he said that, like he was saying this in the early, like late 90, 1990s, early 2000s. And mm-hmm. here I am, this was like 2020, like 20 years later. I'm like, holy shit. Like, that is literally it, could, it like, could be a different episode, but I think the guy's name was I want to say Thunder Walks or something like I that. So, because yeah. I've I've totally listened to this show. Yeah. <laughs> I've listened to a lot of Art Bell. 
it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's so yeah, cool. it's well, my, my boyfriend crazy. follows. He grew up a Methodist. I have to say that he grew up Methodist, but he follows his kind <laughs> of more religious or I don't even want to say religious because it's really spiritual, his spiritual understanding of the universe and God. He really connects to the raw material or the law of one, which really does line mm. up with the Bible as well, where they, you know, these entities like ch they channel and they explain to them like we, we are on a path where the earth now is having to go into we're in third density, which in third density, you're neither positive nor negative. That's the lifespan of a, of a being to decide whether they want to go on the positive path or the negative path, service to others, mm. service to self. And at this time, at this conjunction, the earth now is destined to be a fourth density positive planet. And so we're at mm. this time now where we're seeing a lot of like really nefarious stuff just in our faces and the yeah. thing is happening. And so kind it's of. almost like the negative <laughs> people are, and the Bible says that, that all these dark entities in human form, whatever have to leave, like they, they will be off the planet, like Satan, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. We've learned in the uh, missing books of the Bible that Satan has many names. My favorite thus far has been Yeldabut, because that's fun to say. Um, that, <laughs> I haven't heard that one, actually. Yeldabut, that's from the Apocrypha uh, of John. Yeldabut, that's, it's, it's, it's a lot. But, that sounds intense. <laughs> yes, Yeldabut. Uh, but he has to, like, leave. Like, he can't be here, you know, and all um, the demons have to leave you know it's like it comes but, but they're they're kind of at this like death roll right now or as somebody said i know i'm talking to two guys but i'm sure you can imagine this and i've never had a child myself either but a lot of women have said we're at this point when a woman is in labor and she's like in pain and she just wants the baby out and she'll do anything just to get it out but once the baby comes out a piece is there and you're happy and you have that child so like right now in right. our timeline we're literally giving birth to the a thousand years of peace and that's why we're seeing like death rolls and like i mean i literally wake up every day and i'm like what the fuck like i can't like yeah what is happening now like what is going <laughs> right. on is this for is this for real like are we really you know really like so and i know everybody watching this feels the same way but um you know it, it, but we're seeing that transfer into and it's a quickening which thank god could yeah. you imagine if it was a slowing like if time slowed no. down <laughs> no thank no, you no thank you <laughs> i I'd i work not. enough I, on average, I work a 10 hour day. If it, it went by any slower, I would lose my mind. So like, I would... All miracles. Like, thanks God for some small mercy. We're literally ripping. What am I going to do? Off. Just sit there and drool the whole time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so, so when we think about that, we think about, you know, if you're coming from a Christian background, you know, that we're coming into a thousand years of peace. This is the book of revelation, which we know now that, apocalypse means to lift the veil the rapture is just our yep. us understanding more it's not our bodies physically lifting off the earth because holy crap that would be some ptsd to deal with next life that would be pretty that. traumatic i yeah. won't lie <laughs> it's just our, our vibrational we're understanding more now the veil is lifting everything the weird um occurrences they talk about is really just astrologic um we know mm -hmm. the tribulation is for them for the bad guys not for us it's people having mm -hmm. their justice being served out um, so with that being said, when we, when we move into this a thousand years of peace, what do you think? And guys, again, this is just opinions. None of us know anything. We're just all students right. of, of the world. So we're just critical thinking skills talking about it. What do you guys think is going to happen to places like the Sally house? Well, that portal. That's a closed? good, that's a good point. I mean, if, if, uh, if Satan and his demons are leaving the earth, right. You would think if there's any sort of a demon inhabiting the Sally house that it would have to leave. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're all truly gone, then essentially the portal would have to be closed and whatever evil being inhabits that house would have to leave. I yeah. mean, logically the problem is speaking, they don't want to leave. That's why we're seeing such a, 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 a bat. Like this is like a literal, as I said on one of my videos, this is a W a R guys. Like we're in a literal, like we know this isn't about yeah. politics. This is about good versus evil. You know, it's so obvious. It's it's global. It's so obvious. But um, yeah. Right. That's so. Do you think like if there is a little girl named Sally that's stuck at that house, do you mm -hmm. think that with the a thousand years of peace that her spirit would then be released to move on or to come back into like a resurrection? Like, what do you think would happen? What do you guys think? Y'all both grew up Christian, like me, um, so you have. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure about like a resurrection per se, but I would like to think her spirit would move on. 
I would hope. Yeah. I mean, whatever negativity she had towards Dr. Charles Finney, I would hope would be released or quelled within Ooh. her soul. She would have an understanding of an accident and like be able to let go, have closure for herself. Hmm. I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, that, that logically speaking would make sense. Yeah. What about you, Brett? What do you think? So it's interesting because I know that in Le Revelations, well, I, when it comes to, you know, the end times and the um, last judgment, it talks about, you know, people, uh, you know, the dead will rise from the sea, they'll rise from the earth and everything, they'll rise from their graves. And um, I, I think in, in those cases, in particular with, say, uh, demonic entities in places like the Sally House, well, demonic entities, they're, you can get a good sense, if you've ever sensed one of them, you've ever experienced, uh, you know, like, or interacted with one of them, they feel incredibly unnatural. It does not feel like something that is supposed to be here. It feels like it is breaking laws of nature by being here. And I feel like in that case, if there is supposed to be a sort of um, a righting of wrongs, right? Like it's supposed to be a rectifying and rebalancing that, that those gates are going to be closed. Like the, the laws that have been broken by these demons, well, those laws are going to be put back in place and uh, hopefully they'll get the boot out. Yeah. So, you know, um, so with the, the, the law of one that my boyfriend for the raw material uh, light. So beings that are in the light. So like God angels um, can create themselves. They can like create mm -hmm. stuff. They're positive. Human beings can create their, their own creative stuff. They can create stuff there in the light. Lucifer mm -hmm. is the God of death, you know? And so all of these demons, these entities are, are following the laws of death and darkness and death cannot create itself. So it has to take from the light in order to, su to sustain itself. So when you go to places like the Sally house and you have these experience, it is literally sucking life from you so that it mm -hmm. can maintain its substance of life. If that makes sense. So it can sustain mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where you get this idea of like vampirism <laughs> or the literal or, yeah or like fear is, fear feeders yeah where yeah. they like cause you to be afraid and they can feed off that negative yeah. energy to sustain right themselves. that's called loosh um i've learned that that's called mm -hmm. loosh when you are in a situation where you are generating anxiety or fear you radiate a certain energy off of you and demons can mm -hmm. feed off of that i think we talked about mm -hmm. that last time it's like you're like the mcdonald's yeah. For some demon, yeah, you yeah. know, like it's, the, it's, the it's, McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. like if you if 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 uh, if you want to be like the sirloin steak for a demon, go to the Sally House because he can really that whatever <laughs> pull from you. Yeah, nice uh, fat T bone or a porter exactly. House. <laughs> but when you are like you know, and and I think it's like for what I and I and somebody said that's why they like, horror films do well because they want, but I kind of see it more as like you know with a horror film you could be a little jumpy, but it's more like that psychological you know, fear. Um, a lot of churches will live off of that psychological fear of vulnerability. It's just human nature. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a, that's actually a red flag for a high control mm -hmm. group. A CULT is, is, is that scaring you into submission, but it gives mm -hmm. these entities like a life force to be able to pull off of you. Mm -hmm. And technically, yeah, technically the whole universe, God, even God, that's why God made a deal with Lucifer is because we have, you know, if you're following the Christian faith, you know, man fell, by eating from whatever tree that was. Some people say apples, some people say grapes. This is why people were burning <laughs> this is why people were burning themselves on the stake because they were arguing over shit like this. It doesn't matter, guys. They, they ate something. It's like matter. you had one job. God's like, you guys can do whatever you want, but don't Except eat the apple from the tree. Tree. <laughs> Well, and, and when uh, so this in the uh, just like that's looking pretty good over there. <laughs> isn't that human? Like they're like, don't touch that button, and you're like, <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. like, damn it. <laughs> um, well, actually, in the apocalypse of Abraham that we were reading, the uh, they describe Lucifer, the serpent, as like a Draco, like an alien. Oh, and I'm like, oh, that kind of makes more, more sense, like a Draco. Like, I kind of like that kind of makes more sense, like, than just a snake being like, hey, sexy lady, well, this apple. Well, it, <laughs> you're trying to be thick, does... take a bite of this apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in Revelations, it does talk about the fact that the uh, dragon was, you know, cast out of heaven and it fell to the earth. And, you know, 
we we get told that there weren't any dragons on Earth, but there are dinosaurs. There are all these delicious dinosaur bones everywhere. You know, they're yeah. a reptile. Yeah, and the Draco are reptile. You know, that's and that, that so it's, things are starting to make more sense. Like we're starting to figure this out. Actually, when I did, I did a huge breakdown on the Nephilim on the Giants, and mm. like last year, and I got into all these like court cases where these um these anthropologists had like sued the smithsonian yes yep the smithsonian we just me and brett just talked about this the other yeah. day actually yeah. when we were at the gym <laughs> so all the smithsonian is don't believe anything they tell you like they're just a liar no. like, their pants on fire like they don't nothing oh, they're telling. like don't give them anything like if you find something in your house don't give it to the smithsonian um no. but these, <laughs> don't do it don't do it <laughs> They, uh, these court cases, they literal, like they would, they would hand over these bones they'd found of these giants to the Smithsonian thinking, mm -hmm. oh, this will help for our research. And they would incinerate them because yep. they, they didn't want to go against the narrative. Because if you start, if you start bringing this up that these, these, these beings existed, then that throws evolution out the, out the door, you know, it's yeah. done. And so a good scientist is always challenging his own work and, you know, always. But the Smithsonian, so don't ever, yeah, guys, if you find an artifact in your house, just keep it until like we go into the age of Aquarius and there's honest people. Like a YouTube channel. <laughs> exactly. Don't yeah. give it to the Smithsonian. feel like the CEO of the Smithsonian is just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put the bones in the oven. <laughs> What's the guy from um, um, uh, The Simpsons? So oh, Mr. Burn. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Burn, Burn, yeah, 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 yes, no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, so we know, like, we know yeah. there's so much they've hidden from us, and it's interesting because in that, the apocalypse of Abraham, it talks about, like, basically, like, a dragon, a, 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 it, which dragons can look a little snake-like, they can be represented by a serpent, but it's not an actual snake. It's like a, a freaking like horrific Draco looking beast. And the, um, you Nancy know, Nancy Pelosi. Who hopefully will be taken when uh, Lucifer leaves this realm. <laughs> you know what is so funny? I don't, for Democrats and Republicans alike, I don't think anybody likes Nancy <sighs> Pelosi. Like, drunk no. grandma. Like, the, the great yeah. Skeletor. <laughs> that, that reminds right. me. Um, for some reason, I just had to throw that out there. It, it's awful. funny because. Whenever we would be watching, um, it was uh, the Harry Potter movies, there's Bellatrix Lestrange in it. I remember my uh, mom told me that when I was a little kid, this is before I even knew who Nancy Pelosi was, whenever Bellatrix <laughs> Lestrange came on screen, I'd be like, hey, look, mom, it's Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to derail the serious conversation. So Trust me, everybody watching this on my channel agrees with us 100. percent So you know what's funny? You know what's funny? You know, in in, in uh, the a thousand years of peace, like we're I debated this. Like we've talked about this on other episodes. Like there is this idea that we will live longer lives. Like all of a sudden we'll be living like the thousand years that Noah lived. You know, and like the possibility that could happen to us. Like we could all of a sudden like, you know, not need an a Roth IRA because or 401k because we're going to be living for like a thousand years we are really freaky to think about and we were t and somebody oh, yeah. said somebody said listen could you imagine having nancy pelosi for a thousand years oh my god <laughs> i was like or, I ha or having to work for a thousand years no <laughs> well, with the new, with the new is there like a retirement for the last like 200 of it i've like been with the company for a hundred years <laughs> You can't yeah. just ship me out the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they're saying you know, there'll be a transfer of wealth, you know, like with the Nassar or whatever. They'll, they'll have a transfer of wealth where we won't have to like work like. But then I'm like, you know, for me, I'm, I'm 38. I'm pushing 40. Like, I'm like, this is literally I've been indoctrinated to like work for a certain amount of time and then retire. And now you're telling me I got to mm -hmm. live a whole like 960 more years. <laughs> They're going to change the retirement age to like 975. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've been with oh, this Lord. company for a thousand years. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, that doctor on the other side, that German doctor is probably having a better time than we are. You know, like, the probably. <laughs>
<laughs> like, <laughs> holy crap. I mean, so it's wild to think about the possibilities of what could happen. I mean, wild. We keep, we ask, so we work, I work, uh, my friend Tom and I work with a lady up in Canada who reads tarot cards. And mm -hmm. we, I, we, we've been like challenging this whole like idea of like, what does our earth really look like? Because we've been so like blindsided by these big institutions that I don't know what's like two suns, like what the hell are two suns doing? What are the planets really? What is Pluto really? And we mm. asked Janine to look at the cards. And my friend Tom was very specific. He said, he said, are we on a flat earth or a round earth? And so she pulled the cards and she was like, well, it's neither flat nor round, but it doesn't want to tell us because we're not ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> like basically it's a we're being yeah. tra traumatizing to like know what we're and we got off and i called tom and i was like what the hell are we standing on like what are we standing on <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just a giant terrarium we're literally in the truman show we're literally the truman show no no that's terrifying <laughs> we're, we're we're like the trashy reality tv show for aliens yeah, right. that makes sense. Earth. Earth has it's been funny. canceled. <laughs> well, it's funny because um, you know, me and Cody, uh, we grew up watching you know shows like South Park, and I just remember this distinct episode where uh, Earth was a reality TV show for aliens, and it was, yep. and it gets canceled, and it's one yeah. of the funniest. <laughs> it's still so accurate to this day. I mean, I, I, I got to be careful how I say this because of YouTube. Um, and I always go through every episode anyway and like mute words I have to mute because, you know, of mm. our overlords. But um, because that's oh, the yeah, world our we're corporate living in now. Our corporate overlords. We, we, we our only, our, our freedom of speech is only like an illusion. Um, but ever since, so when I'll say when Mr. T, when Mr. T started talking about how the news is F-A-K-E. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so yeah. I, I remember that he first started talking about that in like 2015, 2004, 2015, and thinking, what's he talking about? And I was like, maybe <laughs> they embellish some things to get ratings, but like they wouldn't be long. Like they can't do that. Like people would find it out. And now in 2021, I'm like, literally everything they tell you is a no. telenovela. Yeah, it's literally all, it's nothing is real. And nothing is real. <laughs> nothing Not is real. It's all, it's all a bunch of BS. media is concerned. I well, mean, I mean, I, all... Go ahead, they Cody. can tell me it's going to rain outside, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, I said that. What's Maybe. I, said, I said, you know, it's so funny. When I was a, a little kid that used to make fun of the meteorologist, like he never got the, the weather right. Now, I'm like, the meteorologist is literally the most honest person on the, the most accurate. Maybe a bad example for this particular well, thing, but I was just going is, out there on a limb. Thing is, is that at least with meteorologists, they give you a percentage, right? They don't say, oh, yeah, it's totally good. Going to rain today. There's a and, you know, chance. And, yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> they allegedly give a percentage. They yeah. at least are honest about that. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I don't know if y'all saw back when, like, we'll say because we can't say the V word, but back when the Cure came out, the Cure mm. came out, and they were showing all these the celebrities, cure. the Cure, yeah, all around, around the world getting their Cure on TV, and people were like mm. screen taking screenshots. Cap wasn't even off. Yeah, like the magic mystery dude. It's it's so weird, man. Like, and especially when you break it down into like these weird little incentives, like we're going to raffle you to be able to get a gun. We're going to raffle you to get, <laughs> you get a free gift card. <laughs> you can get a free gift card to Applebee's to come down and get the <laughs> You like, know, like that's the like, red flags right there. <laughs> I was on, I was on with Charlie Ward over in Spain, and you know, over in like he's English though, but like over in Europe, they have like free medicine and you know, socialized healthcare. We don't have that here, and so, yeah. and I haven't even attempted to look into the cure because I'm not getting it. But from what I understand, <laughs> from what I understand, they're giving it out for like free, and I was on you with know? him, and I was like, does that know? Okay, America. That should be a red flag, too. <laughs> like, when have you ever gone to the doctor for free? <laughs> like, here in America. Or, or they like, offer you $100. They're like, here, 100 bucks we'll for the cure. Just... It's like, yeah, it's we'll like pay offering people anti-cancer meds for free. Yeah, it would never happen here. Yeah, it never <laughs> happens. So, like, so... wake up, people. Like, it doesn't, like, you don't have to, like, my favorite meme is, like, you don't have to be a sit back and go, something's off. It's Something is mega you, off. Well, it's funny that you, you know, the you hear that term 
as a meme that was spread so it would stigmatize people, you know, who kind of dissent against the narrative. So Our critical thinkers. Pretty much. Yeah. So, it, it's worked too. That's the sad part is that, yeah. you know, all it takes is people just using those two words and all of a sudden, you know, whatever you're talking about, you can have a, you know, an entire like stack of information and evidence of government documents and it's they'll literally just be like, <laughs> Yeah, it's void now. It's void. Yeah, it's really, it's to like, discredit your character. I know that yeah. we're, I know we're the majority. Like, I, I get that. And I know that, like, a lot of people, like, our side, ours, we'll, we'll say just in code, our side of this board game, our side of this chess game, we're fun. Like, you know, we're fun people. We laugh. We like to have fun. The other side's just, like, deranged and, like, I think it's Psycho. a lack of oxygen to the brain because of all the, all the <laughs> yeah. diapers. But, but, you know, I just can't, like, I look at them, like, I'm like, literally, how can you not see this? How can you not see this? It's so obvious. It's so obvious that this is all an illusion. Right? It's all an illusion. It's mm-hmm. all an illusion. Like, they, I, they, they, the oh. um, President uh, O, I'll say President O, <laughs> with Big Mike. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Um, he, he had his birthday and had like all those people and but yet you can't go hang out with your friends? No, not at all. <laughs> rules like, rules for thee, but not for me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The haves and the have nots. <laughs> so yep. Yep. But I mean, yeah. it's funny to me too that you know our uh, you know the people uh, you know on uh, let's just say it's like red team or something. I don't know our team. They um, red team. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we um, we actually have a sense of humor because you know I think we're genuine human beings who have a sense of goodness in them, and um, you know evil can't laugh. Evil doesn't understand humor. Like it's <laughs> yeah. That's why laughter is one of the best forms of banishing. You deal with any kind of demonic or negative entity in a spiritual level. Like anybody who deals with this will tell you laughter is one of the best forms of banishing. And you can teach it. It's just so natural. If you laugh at it, it weakens its power because I can't think of an actual opposite to laughter. Can you? Besides no. Just being maybe. Yeah. You know, like the, I can't think of an act- yeah, one of my, like a poor opposite. One of my favorite spiritual teachers that I've, I used to read, he's, he's passed away now, but his books are awesome. And he used to say that, that uh, comedy humor was the highest form of spirituality. Mm-hmm. That was the highest form. She didn't take anything too seriously because it's just like, it's not permanent, you know? And right. um, I mean, I think God has a sense of humor. Again, have of you course. seen Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> in this world. God has to have a sense of humor. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, anyway, <laughs> Nancy, no, <she's> like, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, have you seen AOC? No. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I, yeah, it's, it's and my, my boyfriend, when he moved to India in the, you know, late nineties, he was like 22 and he, and his, his guru, um, and when he was studying, it was very, 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 very strict and very intense. But if somebody took it too seriously, his guru would tell him to like, Oh no, no space. You come like, if you took it too seriously, it was like, you know, no, you can't, you can't come. It's you're taking it mm. too seriously. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to be, I mean, Jesus was probably a riot. He's probably, right. Probably. I do all those I mean, think about what happened when he turned all that water into wine. <laughs> <laughs> there's a in the book of Jubilee. Now. <laughs> in the book of Jubilee, there is a place. Uh, the book of Jubilee was taken out of our Bible. There is a place where Noah gets drunk in it, mm-hmm. where he means drinks too much of the grape juice, <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's drunk. <laughs> like, so, that's that's funny too because um uh, that reminds me of um with the story of Noah I'm reminded of when Noah was actually you know getting drunk and everything and like his son comes in and sees him like being naked and drunk and like you know <laughs> because he like didn't like cover him up and his other sons co- came and did that he basically wakes up and he like somehow knows that you know this particular <laughs> son like saw him naked and so like he just decides to have a problem with him <laughs> you know what the true story is with that though y'all know what the true story is with that though <laughs> What's up? He, um, his son um r-a-p-e-d noah's wife oh that, well that would ex- i mean that oh. would make sense it doesn't uh, yeah. you know, so that's the luciferian incest they all do that and that's where the cain the his yeah. son the Lamb, the canonite. so Oof. cain was i think it was ham was that son that yeah yeah his son and his brother and so this is where we get the canaanites and the israelites from yep so yeah so but because noah Spe- got drunk speaking of inbreeding <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> yes, like this is where this all comes from. I mean, y'all, y'all, can you just think about the people that are still like asleep right now? And I mean, how much we've woken up and like how much it's going to slap them across the face. Oh, uh, it's going to be awful. Right. But we'll, we'll be there, you know, it's like just that meme. Uh, how to talk to your friend who's a, well, there's like that meme that's like um, how to talk to your friend who's a conspiracy theorist. It's just like, I'm sorry, man, you were right all along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I, I, my, my <laughs> sorry, friend, prime minister, he's always like, we're going to hug you. We're going to hug you. We're going to tell you we told you so. But we're also going to hug you. <laughs> we're going to tell you. We're going to tell you we just told wait. you so. Just waiting for a knock at the door from a few people. <laughs> you know, it's like that stereotypical, it's raining outside, they're crying, and they're just like, I didn't Damn, know. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm boom. waiting for some apologies. <laughs> like, I want to list some apologies for some people, because, like, holy right. crap, you know. But like, you're crazy. The I government know, right? would never do that to you. I no, got, you I'm like, you're what? something crazy. <laughs> I mean, do you really, what's this, somebody, somebody put it up the other day, believing the government is going to take care of you is like believing the stripper loves you. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. And then, then they're yeah. like, the same people that believe the government is taking care of them are the same people that also think the stripper loves them. So, um, you know, what a sad like, existence. <laughs> you know, and I was like, how, how did the, the conservatives become the counterculture? Like, how did we become, I, like... The cool kids that are the counterculture. I, I get. I guess it cycles. I mean, you have conservative families. You know, let's say post World War II until like what, like the seventies or sixties, till like the mid sixties. You've got conservative families. Their kids are like, "Screw you, mom and dad." They're I'm ultra go, liberal, yeah. right? Right. And then it's yeah. just it just switches. I feel like generationally, well, it's just only gotten more extreme as time has gone well, on. Another because all, all these crazy people who can't decide what they are, you know what I mean? <laughs> Surely their kids are uh, rebelling against that for sure. Well, another thing to remember too is that uh, people, I, I think our modern kind of culture is associated kind of like being rebellious with being Luciferian, right? Yeah. But we also have to remember that the founder of Christianity, you know, Jesus Christ and the apostles themselves, they were rebels. I mean, they were fighting against the literal Roman Empire at yeah. the time. So, yeah. I mean, yep. like, it, it, I mean, these people died for what they believed in. They were, they, modern, they were going like, through a lot. The parallels between what they were experiencing, especially the apostles, um, because let's be yeah. honest, Jesus was the son of God. So he didn't, he, he knew like he, he had that. Yeah. But the, the apostles were just people like us. Yeah. And a lot of what they were experiencing right before they even came across Jesus was a lot of what we're experiencing. Yeah. And, it, and, it mirrors the early church. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. And they did. They did. I mean, they had to want after Jesus was, we'll say for lack of a better word, really was like, I think we, we kind of forget because we talk about the crucifixion, but we forget that was an execution. It was an execution. So after he was executed, um, all those apostles had warrants out for their arrest. They oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, that, a lot of were, them were martyred. Yeah. All, it yep. was all of them. Yeah. I think it was mm -hmm. like John was the only one that just kind of went on that island and wrote Revelation and lived a long life that was it the rest of them were like had horrific um the acts of oh, yeah. philip another banned book the acts of philip goes through all of philip's what he went through and like his wife so philip's wife was mary of bethany and you hear her name in the bible too yeah he literally had to watch her like when they went when he was in turkey and it was their time was up we'll say he had to watch they were old they were older at this point he had to watch his wife be r-a-p-e-d by yeah. the uh generals at the time before that's they executed horrendous. him i mean that's horrendous. horrific that's they approaching. Went it's, that's sick mm -hmm. i mean horrific what they went through it makes you yeah. uh, you know i think we become kind of numb to that because we hear this we get grandfathered into the stories but then we, what we're living mm -hmm. through and we know that we're we know that it's going to flip for us like we have right. that safety net of knowing like god wins like we're at the end of the book basically and god mm -hmm. wins um but they didn't have that safety net they didn't, nope. they didn't, you know, right. they, didn't they were the pioneers, There's, you know? Yeah. And, it was just pure faith and conjecture at that yeah. point, really. But you know, they experienced fear going. and pain. They oh, yeah. They, they experienced all that. Yeah. Did. I mean, it was, 
I was <laughs> laughing with uh, Melissa Redfield, the nation. We were talking about how we're at the end of, we're at the end of the book, basically we're, at, we're in revelation. And I was asking, I was like, do you think that we're going to have to have like a third Testament because we're entering into this new, new time. And she's like, well, yeah, probably. I was like, yeah, it'll I was be like, a new covenant. It'll yeah. be a new covenant because you think about it. Cause the old Testament is the old covenant and Jesus Christ was the start of the new covenant. He was the, you know, mm-hmm. he's Thomas the new Messiah. agreement. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, and I was like, can you imagine though? Like you have the beautiful writing of the old and new Testament and then you got us. We'd be like, what happened to us? <laughs> this dude who used to be this reality star who was this billionaire, all of a sudden he had crazy hair and he'd be like, what happened to us? <laughs> like, bro, you know, like, can you imagine what it's going to read like from us writing it all these thousands of years later? A tangerine wearing a suit, uh, you know, <laughs> destroyed the pyramid. <laughs> so, uh, and then, like, this, like, guy who was the president's son, one of the president's sons, like, supposedly passed away but turns out he didn't pass away and he you know, john john uh and he's like but helping by like like wild wild i tell you like y'all it will be like y'all think turning water <laughs> into some wine twisted turns <laughs> <laughs> you think turning water into wine was fun just wait till we write what happened to us <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah no it's it's uh i we were supposed to be talking about the sally house guys but y'all y'all always like we always get off with awesome yeah. conversations yeah, we always get <laughs> sidetracked <laughs> yeah, know. Know. It's, it's so fun with you guys it's so easy to talk with you guys because we're all we're all weirdos we're all just you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm also slightly cracked out on coffee right now too so you know <laughs> it is what it is which makes it fun you do what you gotta do you know and i right. actually have Max. i do have to run soon but um let's do this again i know so go ahead and let's go ahead and tease um we're putting together the story of the sally house so do you want to tease tease a little bit cody uh yeah sure put me on the spot <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, the Sally House, um, all around, it's a very interesting story. The history is is fairly perplexing. And obviously, it takes place in a, a town that's not too far from my own. So if you're a resident of Kansas or you're interested in those small town ghost stories that have gained international attention, this would definitely be one to check out. It's uh, It's spooky. It's got history. It's got demonic attacks. It's got anything and everything you can think of or want in a ghost story. So you should definitely watch it. I hope that's good enough. Perfect. That was perfect. Excellent pitch. And Brett, you're an incredible Gold. illustrator. So I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to put you, send me some of your stuff. I can link it below. You are, you also do freelance, right? Like you can. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Well, send me your, yeah, like, that's an awesome job. I mean, send me all of your information. And I will put it in the description box oh, because yeah. we love supporting other people. Oh, I, I'm going to have to bleep that word out because apparently, apparently that word is now a hate word. So I'm going to have to. Oh, great. Bleep that out. I'll put the text <laughs> in. So, um, but you know, we love supporting each other. And, um, and so, and he's awesome guys. I'm going to link again. I, I've been, I have Cody's channel linked in most of my videos anyway, but um, I'm going to link it again, especially I'm going to go find some of the, the videos that have his artwork. Stole Cemetery, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I did, um, he, Cody had commissioned me for like the frame that he kind of uses at one point uh, during that video. Mm-hmm. I think, and I did a few more of the uh, zombie videos, and those are kind of like the set, like few of the other ones I did after that. The first one I really kind of like, um, you know, went all in on was uh, the Franklin Expedition video. Then there's okay. the Flatwoods like Monster. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done, you know, anything after that, you know, after uh, Franklin Expedition, you can probably find, you know, a good portion of my animation and art in that because uh, I was kind Absolutely. of more involved at that point. Cool. I'll link that down below, guys. So if you are in need of an illustrator and artist, please get in t- contact with Brett, because, again, we support our own. You know, we're not corporations. I, we're not. I appreciate that. <laughs> Dude, what did we learn last time, Cody? The pack stays together. You the know, pack stays together. Yeah. Dang right. We yes, need to put yeah. that on a shirt. We should put that. My friend, um, my friend Elizabeth, who's a big TikToker and like the truth of the world, she just made a, a shirt that said, um, it's all a pantomime which is what Charlie Ward says about <laughs> everything going on. And I, we're going to make, right. like, I told her to make a shirt that says like, I'm, I'm a free breather. Like I'm a, <laughs> I'm a free, free breather. breather. I'm a free breather. And uh, yeah, we should make another shirt. The pack stays together. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, yeah. I, I'm so down for that. Yeah, <laughs> I would yeah. wear. I would. I would make it just to have one myself. To be honest, right. <laughs> no one else would get it but me. And I'm like, yes, right. Inside <laughs> everybody joke. on this channel well, and, and you guys, obviously. <laughs> the pack stays together. We, you know, we, we got that from our last episode. We were talking about our dogs. How our dogs get a little yeah. thickety about certain things, but dogs know their packs, and they will. They literally like they go to the bathroom with. They go to the bathroom with you and stare at you because they're trying to protect they do. you. <laughs> that's what they do when they go to the bathroom they stare at you it's because you you're you have their back they have your back i know they just stare at you while they're it's very awkward it's i mean could you imagine if dogs had like a dating profile for dogs like what they, <laughs> they smell each other's butts like you know but um <laughs> could just be noses i know right right <laughs> It's funny. It's funny because I know I saw Luna walking behind you at some point, Cody. Like, you I did. Saw her tail and everything. So. I, dude, I was low key trying to be like, honey, just go into the living room. And she actually walked past me over to the kitchen, smelled something in the kitchen, came back, laid down by my feet for a while. And now she's chilling on the couch. So. Yep. <laughs> she was trying to uh, bomb the uh, video a little bit. She's but, the star. You know. She's the star. Yeah. They, it's like, Dad, we're, look at me. Yeah, we're huge animal lovers. Animals <laughs> are, they're, they're, I mean, dog is God backwards. So, you know, and we know they see things. True. We know <laughs> they see stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're <laughs> atheists. <laughs> they, they see shit that we don't see. So, and that's, oh, we thought that's do. a little creepy when they're like staring at something and you're like, What's the, their hair starts standing up? Yeah, you're like, uh, there's something there. Uh, update: Luna hasn't barked or stared at that corner in quite some time. Especially, you know, not since we've done our last video. So I'm really, I'm really hoping it was just the turtle tank in the next room because I also have a turtle. I think I vaguely mentioned it, but I'm hoping that's what it was. Maybe the tank was running low on right. water or something. But no, no spooky demons uh, awesome. to report Perfect. as of yet. <laughs> Amazing. Thank goodness. Amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. All right, guys. Well, we will we will get the video out very soon on the Sally House, you guys. And I actually would love to hear if there's anybody watching that has experienced the Sally House. Please. We, we would love to. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, and I, have you guys come back on and bring on anybody who wants to come share their story if they've experienced the Sally House. So um, let me know. Just shoot me a comment down below or send me yeah. an email. Um, or Cody, you know, and his channel, Mystery Archives. Again, all that will be linked down below. So Absolutely. awesome. Well, I've got to run, guys. But this was so right. fun. Let's do this again really soon. <laughs> Please. Yes, this is awesome. Sure, I'm down. <laughs> we should have beers next time. We just crack open some beers. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, so what do you think about yeah, exactly maybe we can like watch some like news clips and like commentate on it about the you know telenovela that's that's up before us so yeah. all oh, right dude, guys. I'm, game. I'm so game i know i know yeah. it was so awesome talking to you guys and sure, i sure. will talk to you guys soon all right sounds yes. good bye yep. bye